Hello girls and boys. Welcome back to Read Me a Story. I'm Pat Kazira and I'm going to read you another book today. But first I'm going to tell you about this book. It's called Tips and Tidbits for Parents and Teachers. I'm the author of this book and it will tell mommy and daddy all about the things I learned in my 50 years in the classroom. It will help them to help you at home. They can get it from amazonbooks.com. Today I'm going to read you my finger paint masterpiece. This is another book written by Cheryl Cannon and the wonderful illustrations are by the Colpart team. This book has a lot of rhyme in it. When two sentences rhyme that have the words at the end that sound the same, we call them rhyming couplets. You know, this author has a lot of grandchildren too, just like I do. Max and Theo, Josephine, Charlotte, Penelope, and Simon. I hope they all enjoy this book as well. My finger paint masterpiece. One day in my art class, Mrs. Gallagher said, just finger paint something you see in your head. So I dipped all my fingers in paint that was green and drew on the paper my very best scene. Then right in the middle, I put a red blob because I wasn't quite sure how best to draw my dog. And then the bell rang, so I put things away and never got back to my picture that day. When time to go home came, I put on my coat and I put on my hat and I packed my things in my tote and carefully holding my finger paint print, walked out of the building and into the wind. It was blowing and gusting. It looked like a storm. I hoped that my jacket would help me stay warm. I reached for my hat and I helped it to stay, then realized my picture was blowing away. The wind took my picture up high in the sky. It tossed it and turned it and helped it to fly. It flew down the block and right up to the door of the Rainbow Connection, the art dealer's store. I saw where it landed. It caused me to smile. My picture was part of the artist's new pile. He was sorting through prints for his upcoming show, choosing which ones would stay and which ones would go. I don't think he saw it. He never did stop. When my picture landed, he put one on top then gathered them up with my picture inside and handed the pile to the dealer with pride. I thought to myself, it's too hard to explain. I'd better get home before it starts to rain. I knew they'd find out what they, that they made a mistake. They'd know that my picture was really a fake, for it's not by an artist and really quite boring. By the time I got home, it was really pouring. My mother was mad, for I'd gotten quite wet and broken the rules she and father had set that no matter what happened, I'd walk straight on home and never go anywhere else all alone. All thoughts of my print went right out of my head as she fed me my dinner and sent me to bed. Imagine my wonder when later that week, when my mother and I went to buy me some sneaks, an artist's display was set up in the mall and there was my print hanging up on the wall. It was beautifully matted and had a wood frame. When I looked in its corner, I could see no name. I knew that they'd never believe it was mine. Sadly, my name I'd forgotten to sign. My teacher had told me to sign my own name on all of my work, so I knew whom to blame. The judges were looking at all on display. The exhibit was very important that day, for all of the artists were hoping to win the grand prize blue ribbon and a chance to break in, to become an artist of greatest renown, to be famous and honored throughout the town. 
The judges stopped finally in front of my print and studied it open-eyed, then with a squint. They looked at it smiling, and then with a frown, one looked at it sideways and one upside down. I don't think they really knew just what it was. Even I, though I drew it, wasn't certain because it wasn't quite finished. My dog was a blob, and I wished that I'd made sure to finish the job. Embarrassed and blushing, I thought they would laugh. My dog looked much more like a big red giraffe. The front yard I'd painted in shades of bright green looked like vines in a jungle in African scene. If I couldn't tell what it was, how could they? Perhaps they would just pass it by, go away. One judge was nodding and shaking her head. This print is outstanding. I want it, she said. I love it, said another. It's great, said one man. Soon all of the world will be this artist's fan. The color and depth of this beautiful scene sets a standard of excellence I've never seen, said the head judge while holding the ribbon of blue. Its texture and brush strokes are something brand new. Its deep inner meaning is really quite clear. I award it first place, and the crowd gave a cheer. And suddenly, everyone started to try to explain what they saw in my picture, while I just stood there amazed at what I saw and heard. It's the sun in the sky. No, it's really a bird. It must be a flower. I think it's a frog. I thought to myself, no, it's really my dog. Disgusted, I finally let out a shout. It's my print that you are all raving about. I painted that picture in art class at school. I'm really quite sorry I had you all fooled. The wind took it from me and blew it away and into the rainbow connection one day. The judges just stared at me, rolling their eyes, said one. You'll do anything to get that prize. The rest just ignored me. One said with a sneer, you're only a child telling stories I fear. My mother and father just said we should leave, for there really was no way to make them believe. I said to my parents, why can't they admit that they really don't like my print one little bit? They don't understand it, but think that they should. So they nod their heads wisely, pretend that it's good. We like my painting, and so do the kids but my print should be hanging at home on our fridge. They think a real artist hung it in the show. And if ever you need me to prove this is so, just come to my town. And you know what you'll see? My masterpiece print in the art gallery. Museum art gallery right here. There it is with the blue ribbon. Wow, what an ending to that story. Hope you enjoyed it, girls and boys, and I hope you love painting too. See you next time for another Read Me a Story. Bye for now.